The best a man can do. That'll be the hip tag. There's kind of difference, and that's a hip thing. Oh, hi. You just missed Tom Cruise. He was just here. But now he's out there. Your royal clutches. Oh, um, it's Bad Day at Black Rock. Bad Day at Black Rock is a very compact thriller that feels as though if it were made today, even with the same script, it would be twice as long. It's about John J. McCready visiting the middle of nowhere, titular town, to give a medal to a man named Kamoko. Kamoko's son having earned the medal, giving his own life to save McCready's. Immediately getting off the train, McCready becomes very aware that he's not very welcome. What ensues is a sort of noir western, where instead of six-shooter showdowns, there's a lot of rudeness, glaring, and sitting around awkwardly. I don't know why you're so interested, but uh, the name is McCready. I it's all in the ledger. You look like you need a hand. Do you want to register a complaint, boy? To register a complaint, you've got to have evidence, boy. you got a big mouth, boy. Making accusations, disturbing the peace. McCready, a man with the use of only one arm, played by a mid-50s Spencer Tracy, is an unlikely hero. That, the action being short and very to the point, and the writing make for a believable and compelling story, not where the mysterious stranger has come to clean up town, but where the mysterious stranger has found that leaving is both ideal and impossible. I feel it does a lot of things not just right, but very well, and it feels confident in its concision. And you could probably give yourself an acting class just by watching the thing on mute and observing the way Spencer Tracy looks or doesn't look at the thugs desperately trying to intimidate him. I haven't even mentioned the open fist fight scene that feels masterful in its delivery of satisfaction with the minimum amount of action. But none of these things are what I'm focusing on today. No, instead I wanted to mention the connection between the town and the character of Smith. This guy's like a carrier of smallpox. Since he's arrived, this town has a fever, an infection, and it's spreading. He's the de facto leader, not only because he has a shared secret with the other residents. The film never dwells upon it, it never gives us any insight into how such a situation came to be. It handles it in a matter-of-fact way. But someone like Smith, having a hold over an isolated and tiny place, comes across as believable and really even insightful beyond its time. He seems to be a sociopath. He's not got all of the people under his thumb through being tough, but being two-faced. He's able to prey on fear and pride, and he is absolutely remorseless. I don't, who will? Tim? All I, Doc, your sister with the rocks in her head, there's one thing about your sister, she's got twice the guts you have. I want to apologize to some of the people in town. Act like we're sitting on a keg. A keg? Of what? You're so pathetic, you just lost a job. I think not only is the character believable, but so are his actions. I can very much believe a sociopath would do these things and act in this way, and get normal and even unwilling people to go along with things by pressing the right buttons. The town, almost given a sickly quality in its rendering in the film, has a fever. Tomorrow, it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but it's what I like little things hitting each other. That's what I like.